Seattle's a great city and the Seattle Department of Transportation is trying to keep it great or even make it a little bit greater. We're growing faster than any other city in the country and we're doing it in a really unique way. It's the most, it's, it's growing in a 100% urbanized area. We have at any given time 60 to 70 tower cranes. It's a super exciting time and very challenging time to work on transportation in a city like Seattle. Number one fastest growing city in the country, a uh, huge amount of growth. Um, just over the past you know, few years, we've added 45,000 new jobs in the center city alone. Um, trying to keep pace with that is, uh, it definitely has its challenges, but, um, um, but it presents a lot of opportunities to you know, uh, use our transportation solutions to keep people moving. The growth here has been extraordinary. We've had, you know, over 120,000 people come to the city of Seattle over the last 10 years, and we expect for that number to, to grow exponentially. Um, we, we are having about 57 people move to the city every single day. While that means that we have a very strong economy, it also means that we have a widening income gap, and also that there's more and more people that we need to accommodate in the city, and some of those people are cost burdened, and so we need to figure out as a city, how do we you know, reduce costs, both in terms of housing, but then of course with the Seattle Department of Transportation, how to reduce costs when it comes to transportation. As an operation engineer, I look at the right-of-way as a canvas that I can provide opportunity for multiple modes, when I say modes, you know, transit lane, bike lanes, in order to like operate efficiently. And what we've used is data. We collect data in order to provide information to the users and um, uh, align the, um, the network also to efficiently work using the data that we collect. Data uh, is critical to managing a modern DOT. We actually have uh, a little saying around here that I use with some of our folks. Information is the new infrastructure. So we're using data every day to manage incidences and just manage the system on the routine days. So we have adaptive signal control systems that we're using on one of our busier streets that's improving travel time, but also more importantly, decreasing the volatility in travel time. So it's becoming much, much more reliable. At SDOT, we're really focused on using our streets more efficiently. And that means you know, investing in streetcars like we're on today, buses, bike share, car share, ride share services like Lyft and Uber, and really looking at them from the user perspective so that users are able to take advantage of all of those different options they have to get from point A to point B successfully. The Transportation Equity Program, which was created in 2017, it's really among the first in the country, and so it's a very, very, uh, you know, kind of innovative approach to addressing the challenges that we're facing, but also like realizing the vision, right, that exists here, the vision that could be a, a very inclusive place for all. And so as we are thinking about how we grow in terms of transportation, ensuring that we're doing that equitably is really the focus of this program. We've got a lot of opportunities right now to reshape uh, transportation as we know it in the city. Both sort of the physical infrastructure, but also thinking about where technology is going to take us. The fact that less than 10 years ago, you know, that smartphones were not what they were today and nobody knew what Lyft and Uber and, and the car share services are, are going. Our ability to pilot opportunities and try things, not all of them are going to succeed, but you know, our ability to actually put things on the ground such as this free floating bike share system and see how it can work and give the public an opportunity to sort of use our streets as a live sort of test field for these ideas. You know, that's the future of, of transportation in the city.